Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm new here. I've already heard about you, Dr. Reed. I'm Milton Hooks, the ambulance driver for this shithole of a hospital. That's quite a blunt introduction, Mr. Hooks. You can call me Milton. I like to speak my mind, Dr. Reed. Perk of the job. Don't judge me, and I won't judge you. I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about. Well, I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure a gun can't be used as a surgical instrument. You have a keen eye. I learned to shoot during the war, and have carried one ever since. Old habits die hard. No need to explain, Dr. Reed. And if you ever need a better gun, remember, I may have something for you. Inch required. All right. I'm going to keep talking to people just because there's only so many people and maybe it actually helps. Oh, interesting. It can also do a medical checkup. Are you really smuggling weapons through the hospital? And why not? I've already been attacked by patients, you know, and by gang members willing to steal my money. But you're not defending yourself. You're selling guns to civilians. You keep people alive your own way, Doctor. I offer them another way to protect their health. How is the situation around here? You want to hear the situation is all right? It's fucking awful. We lack everything, and it's getting worse every day. So what do you do exactly in this hospital? Apart from smuggling guns, I mean. I've been an ambulance driver since... too long, I guess. I bring sick people here night and day. It's a dirty job, but I get it done. Most of the time. It sounds like things have been a bit rough recently. What's happened? Yesterday I got attacked by the patient I was bringing here. I escaped through the hospital's garden, but I lost my wallet when I was running. You left an infected patient outside the hospital. That's incredibly dangerous. Go there yourself if you want, but be careful, Doctor. I'd rather not bring your dead body back. Interesting. So that's probably the other way we get EXP, by doing actual tasks for characters. Since you're on the front line, how is the sanitary situation in this vicinity? It's a complete disaster. It's even getting dangerous to enter some streets or buildings. Even the locals attack you. So I guess talking to this guy was a good idea. I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Dr. Reed. A reliable gun is what everybody needs these days. Which I'm probably not going to really do. Okay, so he does sell Milton's shotgun. Which does a fair amount of damage. Uh, 315. I've only got 67. So we, we might want the parts, but honestly, I'm probably just going to leave this alone for now. Okay, let's look around. I'm assuming there's not a whole lot to loot around here. But I could be very wrong. Yeah, I like this game. It's, uh... It, it really does feel like uh, somebody saw, you know, Dragon Age and whatever. And they're like, yeah, we could kind of do something like that. I, honestly, I guess it reminds me of Bound by Flame and a couple of the other, um, a uh, couple of the other kind of, like, action RPGs that follow kind of the Souls-like, uh, formula, but differently. And I don't, I don't dislike it. Hopefully we get to spend more time exploring, admittedly. Just because, uh, I kind of want to see the sights. But first, let's get in here. Dr. Swansea is right. This place seems perfect to conduct my research. Again. Nurses are needed now. In the name of mercy, they depend on you. Nurses are needed now. Inquire at the nearest appointments office of the Ministry of Labor and National Service or write to 15 Kingsways, London. Fear and disgust on every street corner. Good evening, sir. Can I help you? Unless you're here to fix my face. No. I don't think you can help me. I'm Dr. Reed. I've recently taken the position of head surgeon here. War injuries, am I right? You guessed right, Doctor. German shell took my pretty little mug right off. But they still call me Thomas Elwood. How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. It just hurts under the scars, if you get my drift. Can I do anything for your pain? Nurses gave me a bunch of pills. 
no effect. Told you. It's like the flames are under my skin, burning away. Who is treating you? Is someone in particular looking after your case? Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. Wouldn't blame you. You don't seem worried by that. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. I've learned it's easier not to speak. But be assured I'm smiling inside. Soldier, do you need assistance? I'm fine. Just do something for this pain, will you? That's all I'm asking. Where were you stationed, sir? Did you serve for long? I really don't want to talk about all this shit. No offense. I was pushing too much. I served in France myself. I just wanted to know what happened to you. You were an officer, weren't you? Then I doubt we fought the same war, sir. No offense. I really like the voice acting in this game. The lip sync is atrocious, but I can look past it just because, again, this is a double-A game. They chose a really good voice actor specifically for, um... They chose a really good voice actor specifically for the main character, but none of the side characters have, have got, like, a bad voice actor either. Yeah, so I've tried doing Goodbye a medical checkup. Night, Mr. Yeah. Damn. The pain. Okay. Oh, there he is. Good evening, Mr. Hampton. How do you feel? Dr. Reed, is it? Oh, Sora, I must apologize for my behavior. What do you mean? I was not myself in the factory. Fear and exhaustion made me say awful things to you, I'm afraid. You remained perfectly nice and polite. A little delirious, perhaps. But who wouldn't be after enduring an abduction? Thank you, Doctor. That's a relief. Now all I need to do is rest and return to my flock. How did you end up in William Bishop's den? I had received alarming news about his recent behavior. I went to his place and he refused to let me go. Why did he abduct you? William was an alcoholic. His addiction suddenly changed to blood. I don't know why. Just like a patient I met here, this Miss Hawcroft. You dared to enter this awful place alone. You're a hero, Mr. Hampton. Or a fool. I'm just a man trying to help his friends, Dr. Reed. William Bishop was a conflicted soul, searching for light. Do you know Tom Watts, the bartender from the Turtle? I met him before I found you in the canning factory. Tom? Yes, of course. Always the helping hand, good old Tom. Without men like him, corruption and despair would have wiped out the East End long ago. People are still in despair. How could it be otherwise? The authorities have left us all to rot in this contagious nightmare. No drugs, no advice, nothing. It's a damn shame. Who should I avoid in this part of town, then? Any particularly evil figures? Not really. Most men and women are just doing their best. And it's not my habit to speak ill of people I know, Doctor. What is the general situation in the East End docks? The situation has always been tough, with a lot of tensions between the gangs and the Dockers' trade union. The wet boot boys are very nervous since they lost their leader. Who leads the gang now? Since Clay Cox went missing, it's his wife Edwina who runs the show, with the assistance of her minion, Booth Digby. Has the gang been threatening you? Ah, no. I've had this nickname for so long. You know, the sad saint of the East End. No one dares to bug a saint. Not even criminals. How do you feel, Mr. Hampton? Medically speaking, I mean. I feel exhausted. Beyond exhaustion, actually. William drank so much of my blood in his madness. I feel... empty. You're in good hands here. Dr. Swansea is well-versed in blood transfusion, and I'm sure he'll take the best care of you. Thank you, sir. I believe all I need is rest, and then I can go back to the people who need me. Have you made friends since you arrived? Not really, but I recognize Miss Harriet Jones. 
I knew her when she lived by the docks. That poor woman had such a miserable life. You never came to see her here at Pembroke. Receiving visits when sick can be an important part of the healing process, you know. We're not just bodies. You're preaching to the converted now, Doctor. To be truly honest, I thought she was dead. She left the docks many months ago. What do you do for a living, Mr. Hampton? I can't help but notice the cross around your neck. I manage a night asylum for the poor and homeless of the docks, and I try to guide the lost and hesitant on the right path to our Lord. Are you a priest, Mr. Hampton? A deacon, maybe? Not at all, Doctor. I'm just a man of faith willing to preach the good word. Why didn't you use your cross against William Bishop? To repel him somehow? That's a very strange question, Doctor. A cross is no magical token, if that's what you were trying to say. Not mine, anyway. Goodbye, Mr. Hampton. We'll talk again later. So unfortunately, the medical checkup, from what I can tell, is just to check if uh, they're right for the eating. Which is kind of a disappointment. I was actually hoping we could give people medical checkups, especially like the uh, the war casualty over there with the face blown off and stuff. Like how rad would it be if like we were actually, well, I guess I can actually make medicine for them. So maybe I just have to go until I get the associated supplies. Uh, I'm going to keep talking to people because these actually seem to matter. We learned something about Cox there. Though admittedly, I was kind of just zoned out, so I kind of missed it. But we got a lot of people to talk to, so I apologize. We might just kind of check out at a certain point and come back in a little while. I'm all right. Don't waste your time. Good evening, madam. Can I help you? It's my son who needs you, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of Mortimer Goswick. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? I've heard much of your talents as a physician. What can you tell me about yourself, Mrs. Goswick? Not much to say. Just take care of my Mortimer and I'll cover all the expenses. That's all that matters. Oh, Cox was the former gang leader. Huh, so not eating him is probably pretty important. Are you really that rich? Most of the patients here are of a more humble origin, if I may say so. Yes, thanks to my husband. May he rest in peace. I can cover any needed medical expenses. May I ask if you have an occupation, Mrs. Goswick? I'm a teacher by profession. I teach young women who are more ambitious about their futures than their families. What do you think of your reception here? Any complaints? I have had the uttermost reservations about this hospital since we arrived. But we had no other choice, considering the state of emergency. Is there something in particular that's bothering you? Some of the staff were not especially welcoming. I suspect they're not accustomed to dealing with patients of such social standing. Beatrix questions the Pembroke Hospital's efficiency. Fair enough. Tell me more about your arrival at the Pembroke Hospital. What gave you such a bad first impression? The ambulance driver was quite rude, for a start. And that nurse, Miss Hawkins, seems to have quite a dubious attitude. What do you mean? She managed to secure a bed for my son despite the epidemic. It was a relief, but it wasn't cheap. She charged you for a bed? Yes, and I paid without question, considering the urgency of the situation. I share your concern, Mrs. Goswick. Be sure that I'll talk to the people involved. I don't expect compensation, Dr. Reed. But I'm aware such behavior would not be tolerated in other hospitals. Yeah, so talking to everybody is actually, uh, seems absolutely worthwhile. It means this might be a little bit slow, unfortunately. Do you require medical attention as well, Mrs. Goswick? I have other concerns right now, Doctor. But I'm fine, thank you. Oh, I guess you can do medical checkups on characters. Uh, we just might need the, the associated tools. Because, yeah, there's a difference between checking blood quality and otherwise. But, yeah, uh, we can learn a lot just by talking to random NPCs, which almost no other games do this. The only other game I can think of that, like, talking to every NPC is actually useful for more than just, like, surface details would maybe be, like, some Bioware games and absolutely The Witcher. 
And so we are going to spend a lot of time talking to people. I'm probably going to... Uh, I'm probably going to kind of try and mix this between large amounts of exploration and talking. Uh, but ultimately, we're probably going to front load a lot of the dialogue here. Just so I don't have to do as much of it. And yes, her like weird neckband thing is bothering me a little bit. It did look kind of like a beard when I first saw her and I was like, that that's a weird woman. Whatever. Oh, nope, got nothing on her. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Good evening, sir. Doctor. My sweet Good evening. Boy. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? Why are you here, then? I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. Treatment for fatigue. I will see you later. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. I'm all right. Don't waste your time with me. Okay, so we can do medical treatment on these characters. So in that case, let's um bop out for a bit. Talk to these characters later. I'm going to go stock up on a butt ton of medicine. Oh, sweet girl. I might raid the hospital a little bit just in case I can find some more... um. Some more ingredients. Uh, oh, this door was locked earlier. Uh, but let's go. Let's go see if I can make some meds and uh, start knocking these out of the way. Because I bet uh, one of the main ways we're going to get uh, experience here, uh, non-lethally, is by actually helping people. It might not be as much, or it might actually be more. Who knows? Uh, we'll talk to this lady at least, I guess. Good evening, Miss. I'm Doctor Reed, the new surgeon at the Pembroke Hospital. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. You're nothing but dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon? What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency? Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Howcroft? It's only a cover. To hide from my enemies. I can leave whenever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I, I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the morgue. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me, for I am a vampire. I see. Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard Syndrome, Miss Howcroft? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying, that they are dead, a, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. Well, <laughs> I like her as a character. Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require, hmm? 
proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. No, it was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's minds, you see? I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Okay, so midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Enter the back... Yeah, so there's something in the backyard garden. Please eat this person. No. Long letter. Hello. Shh, that is long. All right. Birmingham, 27th of October. Hello, sis. How are things in the big city? Here in Brom, things are not so good. It seems the flu is here again, and we may have many new cases of infection in the neighborhood. You remember Miss Scheller, the old drinking hag from the third floor? Well, she passed away two days ago, and her flat is already occupied again. Jeez. You have to pay me a huge amount of money to go sleep in the bed in which a woman died of the flu just hour, a few hours ago. Sorry, I did not... Take the time to quickly answer your last letter. Between taking care of little Paul, Mum, Dad, and my job at the factory, I rarely find time to write to my favorite sister. By the way, my son says hello to his Auntie Pippa. You should see the little bugger. Already driving me mad. And Mum says you bring back some of those marvelous cakes the next time you come back home. In your last letter, you told me you thought about quitting your job at Pembroke Hospital. I have to tell you, Pip, you better think twice. There are always jobs at the factory, but wages are shit, and it's as boring as a day without a shag. Oh, I have a new fiancé, and no, I'm no slut, you moral bitch, see you. So, if you really want to quit and do something more useful than counting the dead every morning, maybe you'd better stay in London and join that band you told me about. The Guard of Priven, something like that. Never heard of them, but if they're like you said, some sort of civil militia trying to make the difference, maybe it's a good choice for you. Just be sure to let the others go in front. That's how my poor Billy got killed in France. By leading too many patrols, bloody war. Anyway, come back as soon as you can and give me all the good news before that. I'm your affectionate sister, Lucy, Paul, Mum, and Dad. So, Pippa Hawkins. I don't... I think that's a different nurse that we haven't met yet. Hopefully we can find somebody I can purchase uh, medical supplies from instead of just looting it's it all. It's locked. Yeah. Uh, because I would like to. Uh, I would like to make meds so we can pass them out. This but look, flesh needs it. Oh, please spare me, Dark Queen. Let's see, I Good guess evening. we might as well talk to her Good for a evening, second. Good evening, Doctor. I don't think we've been introduced yet. My name is Pippa Hawkins, and I'm Doctor Jonathan Reed. Doctor Swansea has recently offered me a position in this hospital. Well, it's a euphemism that your help will be appreciated, Doctor. How would you describe the situation at the Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are running out of everything. Nurse Hawkins, the Spanish flu won't last forever. Even the Black Plague didn't kill everyone. Well, I wish I could believe you. But what if this epidemic was worse? What if in the end, nobody was spared? You must get a hold of yourself, nurse. <sighs> Sorry, I'm exhausted. No one has any idea when this epidemic will be over. How long have you been a nurse? Well, long enough to see that the epidemic is winning. And no matter how qualified you are, don't tell me you'll change that. You'd be surprised what dedication can achieve, Nurse Hawkins. In medicine, sometimes we're just a test result away from a miracle. <sighs> Sorry, Doctor. I don't want to sound bitter, but I'm just too tired to give a pep talk like Nurse Brannigan. How is the Pembroke staff coping with the epidemic? Well, not well. Milton, the ambulance driver, is even more grumpy than usual. Especially concerning doctors. Why is Milton grumpy on a daily basis? Is it just an act? Milton's not the kind of man who's bothered about a bad reputation, whether he deserved it or not. Why does Milton dislike doctors? Well, I don't know. Just ask him. But be warned. Milton is not the chatty type. I rather enjoy, uh, one thing about this game, uh, specifically there's no, like, dialogue stat, 
every answer you have to squeeze out of these people you get from evidence or conversations with other people. It's not one of those games where you can just be like, I have a diplomacy of 30. You are going to give me everything you know and then some, plus everything I want. And like, I like it when you can just brute force number dialogue things, but this feels so much better. Pepper, are you sure you want to leave this hospital? To become a nurse was a little girl's dream. But in the end, I don't feel that useful. I want more. I want to make things change. I like this split here. You have three options. But you're doing something important here. For all the patients who need your help. We save lives, sure. Each time we send a cured patient home, it's a relief beyond words. But since the epidemic, I feel so powerless. Let's see. Pip is thinking about quitting. Let's see. Saves beds for, for patients who can pay. We've got one more thing off of this. Eh, that's okay. We'll come Goodbye, back later. Hawkins. Okay, so let's go upstairs. Let's actually go to our office and figure things out. It is going to take forever and a day to get through this entire hospital. And like I said, I do want to kind of mix and match. So second floor, I'm just going to check what doors I can go into. Is this mine? Dr. Swansea. Not now. Huh. Not now, leave me alone. I'm in the, uh, I'm in the middle of being a bit British. Right-ho. I don't know. I was imagining what he was up to, and then I stopped imagining because it was bad. We get a used hacksaw. And some kind of note. T. Elwood's medical file. Thomas Elwood, male, age 28, followed by Dr. Tippett. Status convalescence. Date of admission, September 16th. Date of release to be determined. Uh, the patient's, patient's face has been heavily burnt and disfigured by a bomb during the war. Even with the use of the strongest sed sedatives, he affirms to regularly endure severe pain from the wounds, as if the flames are still burning under the skin, he says. Examination of the cicatrized tissues show no trace of inflammation, infection, or swelling. Scars are clean. Could it be a case of persisting nerve damage? The patient never ceases to blame himself for his disfiguration. Could it be a case of survivor's guilt? Phantom pain. Manifesting his punishment for not dying with his comrades. Well, that's a useful little bit. Yeah, I really, really like the investigation feel to this. I I should go back and play some of the like Deus Ex games at some point. It's locked. There's also Dr. Tippett's, but no. Anyway, Dr. Dr. Reed. This must be the place. It's definitely away from prying eyes. Relegated to the shadows. A kingdom of my own. At least I won't be sleeping in a coffin. R. Okay. We get Dragonbane. Oh, my sweet Harvey. Oh, hello. I... Things are happening. Well, I got some new weapons at the very least. We're getting a lot of weapons. I'm kind of interested to see what the differences are going to be. Is the axe a weapon? I have no idea. We'll find out. I was not expecting we'd hit a loading screen here, but whatever. I mean, this game's got away without a lot of loading loading screens. So, I can't really begrudge it. And <laughs> that was fast. Oh, district status healthy. And I got a bowler hat now. Oh, now I look really prim and proper. Dr. Swansea's me message. Dear Jonathan, I asked Nurse Crane to secure an office for you on the second floor. Please forgive the austere decoration, but Pembroke Hospital is not exactly the Ritz. Sorry to let you discover your office alone, but I need to sleep a little before going back to work. I'm just a mere mortal, after all. I also gave orders to let you rest, and for the staff to never enter your room. You will be able to sleep all day without being disturbed, and work at night without raising any suspicion. 
I'm afraid the place is quite messy, but you'll be able to conduct your experiments here at your own pace. You'll also notice there is an open window with a scaffolding that allow you to enter or exit the hospital without being noticed. Imagine how awfully new and disturbing this all must be for you. Believe me, I have studied enough of your species to understand that you must now be facing and what you must now be facing and feeling. Be assured, I'll do whatever I can to help you in this ordeal. Know that you are not completely alone in facing it. I'm glad I met you. These dark times we all present we are all presently facing. I hope our future collaboration will yield great results. Welcome to Pembroke, my esteemed colleague. We shall talk soon. Yours sincerely, Edgar Griffith Swansea. P.S. I left a copy of some of my notes concerning what I have discovered about Ekon in the last few years. Feel free to read about it if you need some guidance, as long as you don't use this knowledge to take advantage of me. Okay, so... Yeah, we got the loot. <gasps> <gasps> it's a rare opportunity and almost a privilege to approach a vampire, to observe their most intriguing physical and psychological traits with a scientific and rational eye. Here are some of the fascinating abilities I've personally observed over the last 10 years while interviewing a few vampires, or Ekon, as they prefer to call themselves. Supernatural speed. A vampire can act and move like a mortal in all his actions, but the trained eye will spot that they have a, the keenest senses and can react quicker than any mortal. On a few occasions, alarm, surprise, necessity to flee, I've seen a vampire move so quickly it's almost as if he had vanished just to reappear elsewhere. The human eye cannot follow their movements when they act so quickly, but it is not a teleport or a dematerialization. It is only a supernatural speed. For me, it is like a cat-like attribute, which allows them to run, dodge, or jump longer and faster than us. I also notice such speed seems to exhaust them, and they are bound to physical limitations. Mesmerism one of the most powerful abilities a vampire can deploy is the capacity to force a mortal to obey them. I call this trait mesmerism. It has nothing to do with the immortal ability to alter a subject's mental state. A vampire can bend a mortal to their will, and they, and they can even break a mind. A vampire I interviewed even told me the more a subject tries to resist, the more permanent damage will be. The more the permanent damage, or the more permanent the damage will be. Sorry, wording. As if the vampire could literally fracture the target's psyche. The same vampire explained to me that this ability required time to master, and that the result could vary wildly from one subject to another, implant a false memory, erase a painful one. The possibilities are endless and frightening. Blood awareness. This may be the most catastrophic ability of all. Concerning vampires, since it is the cause of so many tragedies for them and us, vampires crave for blood. They must use their will to restrain them selves from frenzied drinking every drop of blood they can see. They need blood to function and to express their full supernatural traits. A famished vampire can be very weak, even if he cannot die of hunger or thirst. This urge, this need for blood, may explain why a vampire is so aroused by it. A vampire confessed to me that the blood could sometimes blind him, since its smell and attractiveness can be so strong. When he focuses, a vampire can almost see blood all around him inside warm bodies, through walls, and on a supposedly clean weapon, etc. The same vampire even told me he can see if a mortal has clean blood or is ill, and that in some cases he can even sense diseases, infected clothes, or even items in a room. If this is true, it could have so many medical applications, it almost beggars belief. I really like the idea of a vampire doctor. That's cool. Like. The idea of vampire doctor almost the sounds like the is dying. Okay. It needs water. Can I can I get water? Uh I like actually love to see like a it wouldn't be good, but almost a TV show that kind of follows a plot line uh in much the same way. Uh, that's just ammo. I don't care for that. Uh let's see. Nope. Well, actually no, we could level up. Do we want to level up? The problem is I don't entirely know what I want to pay for. For the most part, I'm going to be relying on melee combat and, and stuff, so I should probably focus on healing. Some stamina might not be a bad idea. Now, are these just all endurance bonuses? Yeah. And health bonuses. So it looks like a lot of the... <laughs> plus 14 per... 
1400% damage. Jeez. That's considerable. It doesn't look like these branch at all. It's just like... Whoop. Blood absorption when using bite in combat. I think for the most part, I'm going to put it into stamina and health for now. The easy things. Because uh, those are going to be the ones that I probably am going to get hit by. It's a TV show about a zombie coroner who could see the memories of the dead person by eating their braids. I heard about that. She'll watch that for a while. Let's see. 300, 300, 300. Yeah, nothing, nothing goes down to the 200 level. I'm probably going to spend most of my points on... Um, on the passives, just because the uh, the actives get a little bit more expensive. What are these? Coagulation. Block your target's blood in their veins, making them defenseless. Interesting. Oh. Let's confirm. Because, yeah, those two are particularly helpful. Being human has a vampire that's a nurse. Okay. I don't watch a whole lot of TV, so these things are kind of new to me. Alright, so we're a little bit low on blood, but that's fine. What can we craft while we're here? Can I make any? So we need a lot of materials. Quinine, ferrous, tartrate, sodium, hypochlorite solution. And we have plenty of glass vials. Analyze the blood sample of William Bishop. Okay, uh, let's see. So we, we've got that. Probably we have a serum. There we go. So, Light Regeneration Serum. Regenerate 300 health points instantly. Then 150 health points over 15 seconds. Let's see. We can also upgrade these. So, we've got a Used Machete, Used Bludgeon, Hacksaw, Dragon Bane. Oh, boy. Oh! The Dragon, Dragon Bane is a pre-order item. I was wondering about that. Like, why I had Dragon Bane. And there's our answer. Uh, I believe that's the same thing with the, um, with Barker. That also explains why it's so long. Uh, let's see. So attack speed is real quick. It's faster than that machete and its damage is good. A bit of a stamina hog, though. But less than, okay. So, Dragon Bane. This ancient sword with a Latin phrase engraved on the blade had been forged in Wales during the 6th century and belonged to... Palula, Palus, Paulus Aurelianus, founder of the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole. Legend says he had this blade forged before he chose the path of exile and left England with his people. Dragonbane has been passed to each new primate of the Brotherhood and may have been used in secret ceremonies when a primate was sent on a path of war to defeat a hostile creature. The sacred sword was supposedly lost during the schism between the Brotherhood and the Guard of Prewin in the middle of the 19th century. Seems a few copies have been made, but this is the true and original Dragon Bane. Can I upgrade it? You can upgrade a weapon to a new level with the required ingredients. It'll inflict more damage. You can also gain access to customization slots. Oh, so we get to choose between these two. Absorb blood points when the weapon hits. Oh, oh, oh. okay, that's helpful. That's really good. Um, hence handling, so stamina consumption and damage. But getting blood just by hitting enemies might actually be a good idea. Uh, I just want to look at some of these other upgrade trees, see if they have anything different. So, the scythe, for example, is either damage or blood. The sword was less so. Let me take a look at the used stake. Probably not going to use the used stake, just because. Uh, well, I might use it now, but i uh, not going to keep with it. So, the used bludgeon goes all the way down to level 5. The machete that we started with, not so much so. Okay, increased stun. Handling. And hacksaw. So, blood absorption all the way. I'm probably going to stick with the sword just because. Damage dealt, dealt, reload time, reload time, damage dealt. Switch to fire damage. Best used against beasts and vampires. Chemical damage. Best used against humans. Five stun points. Okay. And then we've also got shotgun and whatever. 
So it looks like level 5 is the max for most weapons. Well, for starters, I'm going to focus on Dragon Bane. And we're going to get increased blood absorption. Absorb blood points when the weapon hits. Extra damage might actually be helpful. But this works for me. So, six common handle parts. Might actually be able to make that. Because, yeah, I'm probably just going to upgrade this, this weapon as much as I can. William Bishop's blood is much more unstable than human blood and shows extensive mutation. But this is not what happened to me. I must keep on searching. This Oops. Sun is about to rise. I can feel it. I'll continue tomorrow night. I have so much time now. Dialogue just kind of cut off weird. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna switch to the Dragon Bane. Uh, offhand. Probably use the Barker. 